What's going on guys? If you've been following my channel for a while or even just a little bit, you may have noticed that I don't just build boats, but I fish. I fish a lot. And one of my favorite rigs to use are the A-Rigs. And today I'm going to show you how to make your own. Okay, so all you need here is a few pair of pliers to bend wire. Then you need the wire. Those are utility flags from Lowe's and Home Depot. Very, very cheap. You can buy them in bulk for about like five to seven bucks. I have uh, some five minute two-part epoxy from Harbor Freight. I have JB Waterweld. You can honestly use any medium around the wire once you've got it set, but Waterweld like just dries clear white and it dries fairly quickly. So it's kind of an easy compound just to use and it's very, very accessible to most places. You can also get eyes if you want to make it a little bit more elaborate. Those are different sets of eyes and different um, sizes. So just check it out. Okay guys, so you don't need a crimp or any sort of fancy tool to pull this off. You simply need to follow this technique. This is more or less bending one of those wires in half after stripping the flag off and then bending notches in the wire to create grip. Okay, but this is not just for any sort of the clay alone, this is actually for the wire to overlay. But right now I'm making like an extra large one and so I'm using more than one bend. This is going to be an extra heavy A rig, but you really only want to bend one crimp if you want to make it small enough to make it like a castable rig. But right now I have like two here, I'm going to run my wire through. And I'm gonna just twist it around those 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 bends. And that's just the first layer. So I'm gonna bend this to make a loop, I believe. Yep, there it is. And then once that's secured, I'm gonna wrap the rest of the wire around it and pull it off. But I'm crimping this, I'm tightening this, I'm pulling it and tonguing at it as I'm going. And the collar end in the very, very back is maybe the most important end because that's what's gonna determine whether or not you really wanna get that going. But once you have these beds in here, they're pretty crucial because then you can just do anything you want. You can actually put more wires in. I have another lead running there. I have more wire wrapping around. So I made this one extra heavy, but this is kind of overkill. You really don't even need to do it this much, but because I'm trying to run it real deep and real heavy and go for real big fish on this rig, um, I'm running it real stick, thick and stout. And right here is where I'm doing the collar end. And the collar end is pretty important because if you put any sort of like um, medium over the wire bunch, which you're going to want it because otherwise it's going to look like crap, then the collar end right there is super important because anytime you want to bend the wires up, you don't want to crack the clay that you use around it. And so once we have this part done, then we're ready for the actual the bonding part. Bending the wires around into where they're such in such a secure, snug fashion might take a little bit of time to kind of get used to. Definitely want a set of really, really stout pliers to pull it off. Um, different sets of pliers. The needle nose are going to be real crucial for later on. Right now, I'm just using a Gerber because it's it's sufficing for as far as like its ability to bend the wire. But this is where it starts to get fun. This is where we get to craft our little deal around it. Okay, so I'm measuring out. I'm measuring out about a half a stick because really that's what's going to take to cover in and get in between the wires and make a good hold. So generally you don't even need that much. You maybe need a third or even a quarter of it. Generally one of these sticks, you can probably, you can get maybe four A-rigs out of one stick. It's about five, six bucks a piece for one of these sticks. And so you really got to pull it off and you've got to just knead it to death. For like a good minute, just mix it and mix it and mix it. Mix it until like your hands get tired and then put it on. I ask you just to make sure you mix it really well because if you don't, then it won't dry. If you mix it right, it should literally dry in like 25, 30 minutes. If you don't mix it right, it won't dry for days and it'll give you a lot of problems and it'll crack. And honestly, that's terrible because this stuff is actually probably the strongest stuff you can get. So I'm introducing this because a lot of other YouTubers who do DIY A rigs. I've also been using this, and so it's a pretty good platform. It's it's pretty generally accessible. And once you get used to this, you can move to other medians. But right now, we're just forming it around the wire. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna implant the eyes right immediately. Okay, um, mainly because I'm gonna start carving around the structure, and the eyes are a big crucial part about where I'm gonna map my, my thing. So this stuff doesn't really carve like clay. Um, if you use water, um, you guys, it does get really sticky, so you can dip your fingers in water. And you can kind of mold it better that way. But right now we are, um, I just carved it in. It's pretty hard to carve. It's not like regular clay, but you gotta get it, and you gotta do it quickly. 
within like 15, 20 minutes, because it starts to harden. You'll feel it start to harden. It'll come significantly, significantly more harder to even put any sort of detail in. But these are a few of my initial runs when I tried making them. They came out pretty cool. Those are actually different material altogether that glow in the dark. That's a head with a two ounce lead weight in the belly that I ended up painting. And uh, that's the resin over it, giving it a glossy look. So, I mean, once you get your rhythm down and your style down, these become very, very easy to make and you can kind of produce them really quickly. Um, the other part I didn't really cover too well in the video was the ends where you make the loop to actually attach the, the lures or the teasers, but that's very, very simple. Just bend the wire and twist it, and then you can get it. So the thing that's a little bit slightly more complicated is how to attach the spinners if you're going to add spinners. And so I found the most successful way is just to crimp like small pieces of wire or even the crimps that you get from like for like just wire feeds. You can bend them right around the wire. I resin those in place. I actually waterproof this one with marine resin. I just very, very lightly coated all the wire so it wouldn't rust because they will rust if you don't take care of them. Um, another real simple way is you can just loop the wire like this, run the swivel, and then run your split ring to the spinner, and that'll actually hold. Sometimes they'll get hung up on the end, but most of the time they just go right on and spin, especially if you're going to troll them, and you can actually just watch the lure in action before you actually cast it, then using crimps like this isn't really necessary, but the crimp is the best way if you don't want any of your spinners to get hung up or run. But this is my favorite A-Rig right here. This is the one that's my my best most castable one but that's just the latest one but check out some of this footage here that I got for you guys um, it's all about how these things work what they're capable of oh my gosh a little striper ever ha! Woo, typing rods baby Get up up here. Jar mouth that egg. Buddy, I'm pulling up to you. Pull him up to you. This is my first striper on my on my DIY A rig, dude. Get him in. Sorry, buddy. He's going ape shit. It's not your fault. Good job, buddy. Nice one. There you go, Mike. I broke the Ken curse. I actually caught a fish with him on my boat. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. That's the first one. Huh? He went for the middle one too. That's right. So that 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 freaking eliminates my my theory about how because I was gonna put a teaser on that middle one. That was not a good idea. First Mojave strapper. Good. Wanna try an air rig, dude? Yeah. Can I hold it? Yeah, you can release it. Strongest grip you've ever had. That's a freaking nice, healthy fish. There we go. <laughs> Got another one? On the school, buddy. Woo, that one's bigger. Or it's fighting better. It's funky. No, it's a bigger fish. Greenfish. Get up in here, boy. All right. Yeah. It's <clears throat> a nice, healthy, fat fish. Don't worry, the real shad will come. Got another one. Woo, that one's kind of bigger. It's either bigger or it's just a very, very feisty striper. Pull on my pod. It's insanely. What you got on you, my brother? Huh? Oh, he's a big one, for sure.
No, 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 no. Come on, man. This is an Arizona State Legal A rig. Made by me. It's currently freaking killing it. I don't know if it's very big, but it's the way the A rig. Let's take a look to get in. It's got a little bit more size to it for sure. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, that might be a freaking. How I did it was just one way of doing it, and I kind of just followed a, a lot of YouTubers that did it. I'm going to try and post the links down in the bottom of my section on videos that kind of helped me out, the kind of contributing, because like a lot of this was not my original idea. I mean, making the head and making the wire wrap around, I mean, as far as I can tell, that was my original idea, but using the spring, but using the uh, the utility wire and, and making the notches, and then using the the hardening putty, that's that's been kind of known throughout YouTube. And if you, you research other videos, you'll see that. Uh, there's other different ways of doing it. I found this is the best way of doing it because then you're not just limited to using the hardening putty. You can use whatever you want for the face. Um, I found that uh, Plasti Dip, like the spray on Plasti Dip, like the dark gray or the black, I guess, but the dark gray doesn't really shine in, in the water. So I, I think it looks pretty good. I did try just uh, kind of, you know, like a primer or, or a flat spray paint, but it would come off. And so the thing, the thing that's been best for like keeping it resting and then the flexing of the wire once the fish hit it or the flexing in the water once, you know, the water's pushing against the wire has been a uh, plastic dip. I also used a like this West Systems G-Flex epoxy resin, which is kind of a resin to fix aluminum boats. And it's, it's, it's a marine resin. It's pretty darn like thick. It's like really, really strong and uh, it's flexible. And that actually, I've actually had a lot of luck on that. <laughs> I mean, where you're likely to see rust on this model is right at the base where the wires are stuck into the, the hardening putty. That's where you're likely to see the most of the uh, the corrosion if you're gonna get any. So like, if you guys find out a really good way to stop that, I have not figured out how to stop that. In fact, that's the only place where I'm getting rust on my rigs at all now. So if you guys wanna pass ideas on, I really appreciate that. And uh, but I hope this guy's, this video at least inspired you to look into it. There's other things. Look on lureparts.com, lurepartsonline.com. It's something, but I mean, there's places that sell specific lure parts. There's even places that'll sell you specific wires, like just pre-made wires, and you can just make the rig yourself. And then there's also stuff like spring wire, my buddy told me is really good. I and mean, then I think that's how a lot of companies do it. It's the spring wire. I'm just not really happy with the overall version of that stuff. Or I either haven't done enough research to find thicker stuff. Just my main deal for these rigs that I'm making for one, they're cheap. They're like five bucks to make the whole thing, maybe less. And then two, they're strong as tar. I didn't get a good DD striper on there. I really wanted a big striper to kind of really test it out. But I got a, you know a few five pounders on there. You know they're they're a decent pool. I mean if you if you're if you're rating in conjunction about fighting. <clears throat> A one, a one to one and a half pound striper will put up about as big a fight as a five pound, like large mouth will. And then, so you take a five pound striper with the fighting pool, the force and the death rolling. Uh, my, my rigs didn't even bend. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy about that. There was some bending right at the very beginning because I made the wire lead too long. And so all my rigs after that, I shortened the wire lead and there was no bends. So I was pretty, I'm pretty happy with my overall product. So I hope this guy's again inspired you to search through and do some research and make your own. All right, guys, thank you much. Check out my, the rest of my content. Please like and subscribe. Check me on the other platforms. Check me on IG. All right, thank you guys. Peace.